Welcome to the Museum at FIT's Reinvention and Restlessness Fashion in the 90s Virtual Symposium. My name is Tania Melendez Escalante, and I am Senior Curator of Education and Public Programs. It is my honor to introduce Marco Pecorari in conversation with Paul Bodens, who will discuss 1990s fashion ephemera, trends desire, and exclusivity. Dr. Marco Pecorari is Assistant Professor and Director of the MA in Fashion Studies at the New School Parsons Paris, where he teaches fashion theory and politics of curation. Paul Budens is a widely recognized and awarded graphic designer and art director who throughout his career has been closely linked to Antwerp fashion. We hope you enjoy the show. So, um, hi everyone, and uh, I would like to start by thanking uh, both Colin Hill and uh, Tania Melandez for uh, the invitation. Um, we are here, um, the invitation, the initial invitation was actually uh, about uh, the, the, the publishing of a book, uh, my book, uh, Fashion Remains, uh, which, which looked at uh, um, an archive of ephemeral materials, more specifically invitation catalog and press releases collected and conserved at the Fashion Museum in Antwerp. Um, and uh, when we start discussing the contribution for this, con for this conference and this symposium, uh, I found quite naturally, um, natural to ask uh, Paul Bodens, who was uh, who is, uh, the graphic designer, and, and is and was the graphic designer of all the materials uh, that I, of the majority of the materials that I looked at in the archive of, uh, um, of MOMU. Uh, so first of all, I want also to thank Paul uh, for taking the time to, um, to have this conversation and discuss his work. So the idea was really uh, to kind of uh, have a, um, a, a conversation with Paul about his own work, but also about uh, the context in which some of these uh, uh, collaboration with uh, fashion designer happened uh, during the 90s and also late in the 2000s. Uh, the symposium is about uh, the 1990s, but uh, as we will see and discuss with Paul, uh, there are some uh, um, recurrences uh, amongst decades, of course. There are some traces of 80s in the 90s, and there are, of course, some traces of the 90s in the 2000s. Uh, so I hope some of these aspects will will emerge. Um, mm -hmm. In order to start, as I said uh, before, Paul um, really um, mastered the work of graphic design in very different uh, ways. And uh, um, uh, I would like to start this conversation, actually, Paul, uh, with a quote of yours. Uh, but I, I use also to start my book, uh, titled Fashion Remains, which was a way also to kind of raise attention to a category of object that has been really overlooked um, from an academic point of view, but also a museological point of view. Uh, and in, uh, in the book, Fashion and Graphics, which was one of the first uh, publications who actually start to discuss this relation between uh, graphic design and, uh, uh, and fashion, uh, you, uh, in a section dedicated to your work, uh, um, you stated uh, the following, and I'm quoting, in fashion, there is no respect. After the show, they throw away the invitations. I could cry when I see that. I found this quote particularly interesting, especially uh, useful also from an academic point of view to start my investigation. And I would like you to bring you back to that quote and uh, ask you, what did you mean by that? And uh, if you could, um, if um, in these more than uh, um, 15 years, if you saw uh, a change in the attention towards these materials in the industry, but also outside the industry. Well, to be honest, uh, I couldn't even remember that I said it, <laughs> but anyway, uh, but it sure, it sounds like me because I have a, quite of a big mouth. So, uh, and that was a time that I uh, used to go to the shows of the people that I worked for. So, uh, and I think it was, uh, yeah, either it was uh, Dries van Norton or it was Heide Ackermann, but Heide Ackermann is a bit later, so I'm guessing it's Dries. And I was just totally in shock that, uh, journalists, people, uh, clients who uh, watch the show and then they left in a hurry, of course, because you have a whole schedule the whole day. Uh, and then there's a mountain of very beautiful invitations, if I might say, uh, just a mountain on the floor. I was totally in shock. Uh, and that's why I decided not to go to fashion shows anymore. Well, at least the ones that I designed, I mean, the invitations. So because there's really a lot of effort and uh, money that goes into it. And uh, no, they're, they're, they're like small jewels, you know? Uh, so at first I thought it was like really rude <laughs> from the people. And then, uh, no, I couldn't take it. So I decided after a while, 
I'm just not going to go to the show anymore because, uh, or I leave earlier so I don't, don't have to see the thing. Um, so, what did I mean with that quote? That I'm really offended by that, by that behavior. Basically. But uh, I understand, of course, that the journalists or the people, they can't carry everything with them. But I'm sorry to say, but those uh, things were really beautiful. And uh, well, it's a missed opportunity to, to make your own Paul Barnes collection of uh, invitations because we could have had kilos now in a box uh, with really beautiful stuff. But, uh, well, they didn't. So uh, I don't know if I can say anything more. Uh, Did you see a change since, uh, since that period? Uh, also, the attention towards the work. Uh, half the sentence was gone. Say it again, please. Uh, I was wondering if you saw uh, a change uh, since, I mean, the, that book came out in 2004. It was also one of the first book to look at the relation between fashion and graphics. Uh, did you see it more attention towards the work and in general, uh, the, the relationship between fashion and graphics? Uh, good question. Uh, I think it, it was always there, you know. I, I mean, the designers, the fashion designers and the graphic designers, you know, we get along fine. So, uh, and, and the designers really, uh, they spend money on it and they're really, um, no, it's, it's a part of their collection in a way. So uh, what the audience does with it, that's another fact, of, uh, of course. So uh, I don't know, but I, I think it's always been like that. Uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier did it in the 90s. Uh, we, all the Belgians had it in the 90s. Also because, uh, I, I'm not speaking for Jean-Paul Gaultier, but all the Belgians basically didn't have a budget to do um, really advertising and stuff. So uh, they put all their uh, money and, and the taste in their collections, then also the invitation. And that was our kind of uh, uh, the way to uh, attract attention. So uh, because it was a budget uh, thing, basically, because we didn't have money to uh, uh, take out huge advertisements in newspapers or magazines. It's just not a Belgian thing, you know. Uh, it's different uh, overseas, I guess. but. Uh, yeah, I think that's an answer, no? Was that yeah, still and, yeah. yeah, and actually it brings me to a, the, my second question, which is uh, more going back to the theme also of, the, of this conference, which is about the 90s. Mm -hmm. So you started working in the, in the late 80s after you know, a path also in education. Um, and I was wondering, what did you bring up actually from that decade, let's say, if you, of course it's difficult to, to define our creative work from decades, but if there was a sort of shift, if you if you brought something from also your education and your uh, you know everyday life uh, from the late eighties to the nineties, um, because uh, during the nineties your work was really connected, as you mentioned, to the work of Belgian designers, and it's also a period of time when a lot of designers and uh, what we've been defined as Belgian or Flemish or Antwerp fashion designer like Dries van Nota, Walter van Berendonck, Ando Melenester, and many others uh, came into uh, a more international scene. So what did you, what did you, what inspired did you and what did you bring from the 80s to the 90s in your work? Well, um, well, I was studying in the, in the 80s. I'm not that old, you know, but uh, no, I, I do think uh, I brought my spirit from the 80s in a way. I was never a punk. I was more of a new wave disco chicken hybrid anyway, but, uh, but it's just a way of, uh, how would I say this, uh, the way of working and thinking, I think, because Way back then, there were no computers, if I remember correctly. Everything we did for Walter van Berendonck, this stuff looked totally uh, science fiction in a way, and we did everything by hand. So uh, um, I swear to God, uh, I could do letter set uh, stuff faster than writing in itself, because we did everything by hand with photocopy and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, and there was a well, we were younger, of course, so we were uh, quite fast in what we did. And uh, so we had this youthful energy. Uh, it's not gone yet, but it's different, of course. Uh, so it's just, uh, I think it's the spirit I took, also the techniques. And also because I, in school, uh, yeah, there were no computers, so forget it. Uh, I, we did everything by hand. It's this, what I call, analog uh, approach. Uh, and then 
uh, in the 90s and mid 90s, I uh, what, uh, started to work with a computer, but I, I learned it in one day, you know, so every program, uh, you know, I work now, it used to be Quark Express before it was in design, but I only, I do everything with a, like we say in, in Dutch, with a wet finger, you know, just, I, I can use it. You can't see that I'm uh, basically, that I can't ch change a light bulb, but uh, it's just first in your head and then you have to make it. And I have my way of working. Uh, and I think that still uh, makes a difference uh, until now because I have a different, uh, well, my approach, not a different approach. But uh, I think now, uh, for example, students, well, they, they, just, they just learn the digital way and then maybe they have to learn the analog way, but I uh, have the, the other way around. So, uh, and I think also more in an analog way because when I get an assignment, it pops up in my head and then I try to recreate it by using, uh, well, analog stuff and a computer. Uh, so it never starts from the digital thing. Um, so I have this, in my case, uh, I think a good mix uh, and it's really my style. So nobody, well, dare I say, uh, works like me. Uh, so, and that's what I'm trying to, um, embrace in a way because it's no use that I start learning every program like everybody can because uh, my mistakes are sometimes uh, the, the stuff that makes a difference I think yeah and, and Paul uh, if you have to bring us a bit back to the to the period like the end of the 80s and 90s in mm -hmm. Antwerp uh, how was Antwerp at the time because I mean like, today it's a completely uh, changed uh, city in relation to the approach to fashion, how fashion is present in the city. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why at the beginning was different. And I, uh, I'm thinking about your work and I'm thinking about a lot of, I mean, or at least maybe I'm, uh, I'm over, uh, overseeing that, but there is, it seems to be a lot of influence from music, um, uh, music paraphernalia, uh, also the, 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 you know, sort of club, uh, club scenes. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that that period in Antwerp and and what what were you looking at at the time when you were working on this? Visually, I'm no. thinking. I must say, uh, Antwerp was uh, way more fun than now. I must say, I, I'm sure COVID has to do with it. But uh, you know, the 80s, of course, I was. Uh, a twin uh, in my 20s uh, so uh, we basically went out uh, four days a week uh, also you have this youthful energy uh, and you're just like a sponge you, you just soak up everything um, also in school I learned well you get your influences from there I, I think because like people like uh, Brodovic I never heard no, also it took me four years to uh, find out what I uh, wanted to do with my uh, life and uh, slash career and all so uh, you know and then you just start uh, soaking up stuff so uh, when I discovered uh, Alexei Brodovich it, it was a uh, uh, like an epiphany you know or the face was there the magazine blitz was there the magazine so the face was never brody blitz i don't know uh then vaughn oliver was uh did a lot of um covers for 23 uh, envelope i think the the label uh harper's bazaar no I, I was very 50s inspired in the beginning let's put it that way but i must say uh everything that you soak up uh, it's just um, uh, comes into your DNA. That's how I call it. So, and in the beginning, my work was, uh, well, you have influences. You always have influences, of course. But uh, at a certain moment, uh, you just uh, make them your own. Well, that's the point, I must say. So, uh, so suddenly you wake up and you have a, you have a style, you know, uh, which I, I never... Well, I did want to create that, but I, I never uh, thought about it because uh, when I never think too much about anything, uh, it's just pure influence and then you make it your own uh, instead of uh, seeing something that you like, copying it and then claiming it's your own. That's a whole different approach. This is just a, a digestion of influences and then suddenly, ta-da, you have, uh, well, a style basically, but that took, 
at least 10 years because uh, like I said before, I was studying in the 80s and then I started at Walter when I was in my third year, but then I was already 26 or 27. Uh, when did I graduate? 20, when I was 26, I think. So uh, I did everything the wrong way. I'm sure that maybe that's the, the secret of my success. I don't know. So uh, did you look at other people's work at the time? Uh, you know, approaching fashion. Uh, I mean, you explained in many of your uh, previous interviews how you arrived, you applied for the, for the fashion school and then uh, slowly- yes, I, I, I never got in, <laughs> which is uh, in hindsight, it's very good because uh, I would have been a terrible fashion designer, let's be frank. Uh, no, no, and then I really I spent four years, uh, sadly, on my parents' uh, budget. Uh, I'm still a apologizing until now, uh, because I just didn't know, uh, I had no plan B basically, because uh, I grew up in Germany, I came to Antwerp to study fashion, and never got in, I was like, Ooh, what do I have to do now? Uh, let's, uh, I did anything else, I did like communications, I did uh, translation, well, you all take it with you, but I, I never finished anything because my heart wasn't in it. And then, but I was always making collages and stuff uh, at home, just for fun, you know, um, because fun is very, uh, in your work, is, is very important, I think, still is. And, uh, and then I got the, between the uh, brackets, um, I got discovered in a way because I made a birthday card for somebody and then somebody in the, at the party said, who made this card? And I was like, oh, I did, but I just did it for fun. Study. Yeah, you have to study graphic design. I was like, oh, maybe I can do this. Then I went to study fashion, uh, graphic design and I still failed the first year. So that was four years down the drain. Uh, and that was also uh, the, the budget of my parents that they planned four years was uh, down the drain. So, and then the minute I said, well, mom uh, and dad, uh, I know what I want to do because I really, I was bitten by, by the, the, the graphic design bug. I was like, I really uh, know what I want to do now. And they said, yeah, but you know, you've spent your budget and that's it, uh, you're, the, you're the youngest. Uh, everybody had the same chances and they're right. Eh? So then I, I, I went to uh, wait tables and stuff like that. Also, I, I got to learn a bit of responsibility wow. uh, about time too and, uh, and stuff like that. And in those four years, of course, I went out like crazy. I was like, oh. Also, my money was always gone by Wednesday. Unbelievable. Uh, also in Germany, there was no VAT. <laughs> I don't know why, but it was like that. Uh, and I used to live like that. So uh, a bit of uh, irresponsibility. Uh, I must uh, I think I'm turning red now, my favorite color. But uh, yeah, what can you do? But like I said before, uh, you take everything with you, you know, because I, then I studied uh, languages, uh, English, Italian, I can still, well, English goes, uh, Italian, well, I can order Italian food uh, without an accent, I guess. Um, and then, uh, you know, also when I make books now, I, 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 really I see every mistake, almost every mistake, uh, stuff like that, you just take it with you, you know? Um, so no regrets, uh, or otherwise I would have been working uh, four years longer than now. So win-win, I would say. So, uh, but, I, and f but I must say fun is really a very great aspect of it. And also uh, because of what I said earlier, that the analog thing that I, that I uh, studied uh, in basically or with, uh, that I took with me and then only, like I said before, the, the mid nineties, I started to, to work digitally. And I think then now this uh, mix, well, since then uh, I'm doing it like that and well, it works for me. Uh, can you teach that uh, somebody else? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I also tried teaching uh, people, but I'm the worst teacher ever. So uh, I decided not to do that uh, after a year or something. And I'm still apologizing to my ex-students. So let's be frank, sorry. <laughs> and Paul, I, I think maybe um, we could maybe start with uh... With some examples, I mean, we don't have so much time, so I would like really to yeah, no. discuss with you some of the of your work. And uh, I, I I thought very 
we, this, um, this example is, a, I think, is a quite interesting one because you work on it, but you were, you know, part of it in, a, in, in different ways was, I mean, you call it as one of your first job in your presentation. And uh, I think what is interesting is that it, it came out for the, uh, for the uh, spring summer uh, 1990. So we are the beginning of a, of a decade and we have yeah. a statement like passion is that. And, and I think, I think, of course, there is a game from Barendong. But while you get inside, there are also interviews and representation of uh, the other collaborators around around uh, uh, the creation oh, of the collection. And I'm thinking about yeah, of uh, and also one of your uh, of of the people you work for or with Anne Anne Kouris. Um, what I found interesting about this invitation is that it kind of symbolized, we could say, a sort of a rupture that the Antwerp Six brought uh, at large to the international uh, fashion field. Uh, what would you think? Uh, what do you think made the difference at the time? And I always wanted to ask you why do you, what role was played by communication? And I know it's not to give you more agency on this because you're here, but I think communication, as you were mentioning before, was very particular in this period of time from a, a designer coming from Belgium because there was no advertisement. So this type of communication materials like invitation catalogs had to be to some extent more. Um, provoking or different or uh, driving attention uh, to, to yeah, of course. so what well, you wrote uh, a bit the the um, the uniqueness uh, why why well, this attention in the nineties you think well uh, the internet didn't exist yet so that uh, helped in a way uh, we didn't even know it was coming uh, to us uh, no this is. Uh, I was still in school when I did this. Uh, I didn't even create this cover uh, in a way uh, because I just did the inside of the magazine, which we never uh, photographed. Uh, but that was, of course, well, the woman who discovered me, Anna Kuris, uh, she was then a very good uh, graphic designer. Um, and, uh, but that was her uh, star pupil, let's put it that way. And uh, she asked me to help on it. And that's also the, the way how I, uh, met Walter because she said, yeah, you know, Walter needs an assistant. Uh, do you feel like, doing? And I think I was in my third year. So, uh, so I went to him and I, then I had to do an advertisement, fake advertisement, because we didn't do advertisements, but it was his own uh, newspaper. And it was like this fake perfume ad for his uh, bull terrier dog called Sado. Uh, and then, and, and Walter always sketch, sketches everything and said, yeah, I want something like this. And I said, yeah, can I change it? You know, uh, youthful arrogance. Uh, and he said, "Yeah, as long as you make it better, do what you want." And uh, well, I did, and then we, we never stopped working together because uh, I'm still, I'm still working together, not as much as we used to, but uh, no, we, we just have this way of uh, communicating with each other, and he trusts me, which is very important, I think. And then, uh, yeah, it's uh, amazing. So. Uh, but then the whole thing, so so first, so there was no internet, so you had to make a, a kind of, uh, well, you had to make something that would catch the eye of uh, an audience or just journalists or people in Paris or in London. Uh, so it was all uh, very in your face what we did, just to get attention from uh, abroad, basically, because Belgium, uh, let's be frank, uh, there was nothing going on except for the six of Antwerp. Also, they came out as a group, which was a good idea. It was also a budget question, but um, they just made a stand as a group. And by accident, everybody was really excellent in that group. So uh, different, but uh, excellent. So that helped to uh, make a, a bit of an impact uh, internationally. And some of them got uh, uh, successful earlier than the others. But in a way, almost everybody of them uh, had a career, you know? So uh, then, for example, the BAM magazine, uh, then I was also assistant for uh, Anne, I, mean, I think the third one I started. Uh, so it's all connected because what, uh, no, Antwerp, it still is a very small city and the fashion scene is also very small. So uh, and we're not like uh, best friends, but you know, you're very good acquaintances, you know, and also, Back in the day, no, in Antwerp, nobody did fashion and graphics. So I was uh, very lucky to be the one, uh, the chosen one in a way, but I was also 
well, quite good in it. Uh, so um, it's a bit of a, a mix of, um, you know, uh, coincidence, uh, fate in a way, but also talent and just, uh, yeah, you're part of a group that suddenly uh, gets invited into the world and then you just surf along with the wave, you know, so does it answer your question at yeah, all? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I wouldn't, to float I would, off. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I think it does. And, uh, and I think uh, what is interesting, what I, what I was also trying to also ask you is, um, would you, because Antwerp seems always kind of, a, I won't call it a cocoon from an outside point of view, but it's, it's a very small city uh, compared to, you know, the other capital. And, but, and it seems like there was a sort of organic way of building things together. And you work with not only Walter van Berendok, but you start working with Dries van Noten, you work for the fashion department, which really kind of started to uh, increase attention, even media attention. And I think it was not only Antwerp, but also Centre St. Martin in the 90s became very, uh, looked at and the new young designers, so beside your creativity explored exploded during the 90s right so i would right. just I, I would just wondering can you uh for example you um, i i will now show some of your work uh, also for the, the people who are listening to us uh and i would just could you tell us a bit more about this collaboration how did you change also or if you didn't change uh moving from a designer like Walter van Berendon to Jurgi Persson which is, uh, this is another example of work because they had, as you say, they were very good in being a group, but at the same time, they had very different type of aesthetics. And you were, in many ways, sometimes you were sort of uh, the, the common link, uh, at least from a visual point of view. Uh, yeah, of course. Can you tell us more how this collaboration worked? Well, uh, apparently I am a schizophrenic. <laughs> Because uh, and no, because I can really uh, read people very well, I guess. Because uh, no, I remember no, I worked for Walter for seven years or something in his studio, or five years uh, without doing anything else. But I learned a lot, uh, including uh, working with a computer. Then, I, uh, but then Antwerp is so small; you meet other people. So. And there was also already a new wave of designers like Wim Nails, Yuri Persons, uh, who used to be assistants of Walter, and then they started their own collection. So then they knew me, of course, and then uh, the, it was obvious that I was going to work with them. Uh, I think this uh, thing from uh, the, the thing on the beach, I think that's my first attempt at uh, scratching in Photoshop, you know? Uh, and as, if I remember correctly, somebody had to do it for me because I was. Uh, quite useless with it, but I did have the idea to do it like that. So, uh, no, and then also, it's it's also a thing that comes from the uh, academy because they, uh, every uh, student who comes from the academy, when they make a collection, they really make a story, you know? It just helps to, uh, uh, Walter still does it, I think. Uh, I don't know, uh, in, in case of, uh, they, always, they always have a title, a theme, and then they, they just, uh, yeah use this as a frame to uh, hang their collection on. Uh, in case of Yuri Pessons, no, he always had like very small, uh, small stories, like, uh, or just a title, what was it? Uh, the one with the beach was, uh, oh my God, it's, it's so long ago, sorry. Um, it's like Benidorm, bitches or something stuff like that the also the, the blood invitation we did that was like blood wedding i was like okay and blood wedding i don't need anything more um uh, so you get it's like uh the designer throws the ball in the air and i'm like a seal who picks up the the thing and then and goes on with it so um it's just like um crossbreeding in a way uh, because they make their collections uh some of them better than others, let's put it that way. But uh, I always could re uh, really get into what they were doing and then make something that they uh, really liked and could say is their own uh, stuff, but then also that, uh, that you can find my DNA in it, you know, like the handwriting. Yeah, blood, you cannot give more DNA than, than real blood, of course. Can uh, you, which we, Paul, uh, Paul, can you tell us a bit of the story of the, because I mean, uh, I know the story, but maybe also for the public. Tell us a the bit blood. more about this, this invitation with the blood. But, yes, I'm an idiot. But no, uh, no I ne like I said before, I never overthink anything. So I had a small meeting with Yuhi, and he said, yeah, you know, I want like this uh, uh, 
wedding invitation, but really like everybody gets shot. And that was way before Game of Thrones, I must say. Uh, everybody gets uh, shot at the reception. I was like, I think I know what to do. So I went home, then we created this, uh, or I created this uh, very chic uh, uh, with gold leaf and stuff. And then we wanted to do this uh, shock effect, basically, because we wanted to make an impact. Uh, then I was thinking, like, well, how am I going to get blood? Because that's to be real blood. Uh, and then I was like, okay, uh, well, use your own. So I called up a nurse uh, that came to my place, uh, took some blood, and then I splashed it on paper. No, I didn't splash every uh, uh, invitation, of course. Uh, I did scan, uh, have it, had it scanned. Didn't know how to make a scan back then. Uh, and then uh, we incorporated it uh, onto the... Uh, invitation and it's it sent, it sent like shock waves you know uh, through the whole uh fashion community way back then uh but then the season uh afterwards i i used the uh, red tint you know the, the thing you use to clean up wounds because you can't give blood all the time uh i wouldn't be here anymore i guess so uh yeah fun times i must I, say i think i think paul that brings i mean at least from my uh, my point of view it brought another layer of uh, also of authorship and you how you know there is all invitation but also a lot of work that you did for books and catalogs mm -hmm. are often about this sort of uh, um questioning the one the, the person who's receiving these materials and, and creating a bit of uh, you know engagement with them um and we don't have so much time yet left but i just wanted to have Two, uh, two last things. One was connected to uh, this project, which actually brought to a, a huge event in Antwerp, but also brought to, uh, to the creation of a magazine, which really, it, it came out in 2001, but it, to some extent we could say that it's a sort of product of the 90s as well. Yeah, uh, yeah it's the end of the, uh, yeah, I think Walter's plan for the whole uh, exhibition thing, uh, the, fashion, uh, the fashion project thing, yeah, he had it, uh, was end of the 90s, of course, and we started on it in, in 1999 and then worked on to 2000 and then the thing started in 2001. So, uh, but of course, with the same uh, spirit we have, have even, not had, we still have it. Uh, but then we had a kind of a good budget because it was a cultural cultural project, which uh, had five exhibitions, uh, and then landmarks in the city, and then uh, a magazine, uh, number a magazine, <clears throat> but that that then became later a magazine curated by uh, through uh, financial uh, reasons, but anyway, but our approach was, of course, to, uh, well, very, uh, bit, is it avant-garde, is it punk, I don't know, uh, but we, we were just relentless, you know, it was like, oh, let's make it without a cover, and we ripped off the cover, uh, we did everything in uh, only three colors, two grays and black, I think, uh, it was dead expensive, I can tell you, but since we were a cultural project, we could pay it, afterwards, we had to do it uh, on our own, find advertising and stuff, uh, that was a bit more difficult, I guess, but you know, the spirit, it's really the, the big word for today, I think, our spirit has not changed very much, I must say, uh, depends on the client, uh, really, but uh, I, I know Walter still works in the same way that he did uh, in the in the 90s, 80s, 90s, and, and so do I, I'm like, uh, pops in your head, and then you have to create it, and then as if you make an impact, you like it, of course, which doesn't mean that we cannot go subtle, of course. Uh, is this the right one? I don't know. This was a lottery scratch uh, system for Olivia Taskins. Uh, actually, I, I wanted to do it without the scratching, but then he chickened out, basically, and he said, oh, Paul, people are not going to get it because it was just an A4 thing, silver. Uh, and then if you scratched it with a piece of, I don't know what, uh, then you could see the name. And then at the back side, of course, you don't do it on one side, you do it like the face. So on two sides, even more work. Uh, then we scratched it before, so people uh, got the gist, you know. So uh, you know, another Sunday, scratching away 2000 and, and, and invitations. Uh, I miss it. Do you think, do you think, I think this, this example, but also a lot of, I, I think also the A magazine, but at the beginning was more mm -hmm. following a sort of alphabet and then uh, followed another, another order. Do you think 
uh, to close our, our quick uh, conversation, do you think uh, it, we could say that it kind of represents uh, a sort of uh, the nature of that period and a sort of at the end of a decade, also the, the starting of a project that, uh, you know, really kind of performed what the 90s, what, the, what we went through the 90s also, the transformation of a designer more than just a dress, someone who making dresses, but it, more someone who creates mm -hmm. a visual, a visual uh, atmosphere, uh, arriving to the point of becoming a curator for a magazine. Um, do you think the A magazine could represent a sort of shift? And if yes or no, uh, do you see any remains of this attitude uh, of the 90s or the attitude that you saw uh, by working through the 90s in today industry? No, but I think the whole A magazine thing, it was really a game changer in Belgium because we had no uh, decent magazines uh, way back then. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a total success in the beginning, uh, but it was very radical and we are quite radical in our thinking and uh, approaching stuff. Uh, it's just our way or the highway, that's all we do. So, uh, of course, this that you're showing now is uh, already another um, evolving of the thing. Um, no, I mean, also for me, the 90s are much more slick than the work we did, I must say. In my head, the, the, the 90s are like terrible <laughs> in a way, uh, but that's uh, just general uh, knowledge, I think. So we, we did have another approach. We, we were more like based still maybe in, in the 80s vibe uh, or the, the punky new wave vibe, which sounds... Uh, <laughs> Terrible, basically. No, but we just had a different approach. Also, the Belgians were a bit of a, a strange group in the whole thing, I must say. So uh, we just had a different approach, I must say. And is it something in the water over here? I don't know. Uh, I think so, because I don't know where it comes from. But uh, yeah, but I must say, because I just worked with Walter, its attitude hasn't changed. I mean, its way of thinking has not changed. So I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, so yeah. Okay. Thanks so much, Paul. Um, I think we are running out of time. So again, thank you. Yeah, for hours. <laughs> I know. <laughs>